Hello and welcome back to Animal Sciences 142. Today we're going to start part two of our lecture on cells and specifically we're going to focus on cellular reproduction. So like most mammals, cats and dogs start out as one or two cells. That is, they start out as an egg and a sperm cell that get together during the act of fertilization and then become a fertilized egg or zygote. Now, somewhere between fertilization and adulthood, that zygote for, goes from being just one cell to over 10 trillion cells. So the question for today is, how did we get there? In order to understand how cell division works, we need to know a little bit about the cell cycle. Basically, the cell cycle is an orderly sequence of events by which a cell duplicates its contents and then divides into two. It consists of two phases, interphase and also the mitotic phase. Now, interphase is all the different time that the cell is spending not reproducing. And so during interphase, the cell is growing. It's also replicating its genetic material, whereas during the mitotic phase, we're actually concentrating on dividing one nucleus into two nuclei uh, and hoping that both of those nuclei are going to have the same number of chromosomes, same DNA, etc. So of those two phases, mitosis and interphase, interphase occupies the largest time frame in a cell's life cycle. So during interphase, the cell is doing everything that a cell normally does. It's moving things across its membrane, it's repairing itself, it's manufacturing proteins. The only thing it's not doing is actively dividing the nucleus. Now during interphase, we have three different subphases, G1, S, and G2. Okay, so once we complete interphase, we're then going to enter the mitotic phase. The stages of mitosis include prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now remember, these are things that are going on within the nucleus. At the same time, however, the cytoplasm of the cells may start to divide, which is called cytokinesis, division of the cytoplasm. Let's take a look at each of these stages of mitosis in greater detail. Stage here is prophase. Now during prophase, you can see that we have a clearly visible nucleus, but that the nuclear material in there, the DNA, has condensed into visible chromosomes. Now normally the chromosomes are just sort of unraveled into this diffuse material called chromatin, but once they condense, we know that we're somewhere within the mitotic phase. And here we know that it's prophase because we can still see a nuclear membrane and we see condensed chromosomes. Now towards the end of prophase, the nuclear membrane will in fact start to disintegrate 
and spindle fibers originating from the poles of the cells would begin to reach into that dissolving nucleus and grab a hold of the chromosomes. Okay, the next phase here is metaphase. You can think of meta here as meaning middle. The metaphase happens when the nuclear membrane completely breaks down and the microtubules from our centrosomes have basically pulled onto our chromosomes and lined them up in a single file conga line right down the middle of the cell. So essentially what's going on here is we're having a tug of war between the centrosomes at the two opposite sides of the cell and the structure that they're pulling on is the centromere that unites the sister chromatids of each chromosome. Now remember that sister chromatids are genetically identical copies of the same chromosome. So that if you take a look in the next phase, anaphase, what will happen is that those two chromatids will be pulled apart. But because those two chromatids contain the exact same information, both sides of the cell, both of the new cells, are going to contain the same genetic material. So the final phase of mitosis is called telophase. During telophase, the nuclear membrane begins to reform, but instead of just having one nuclear membrane, we now have two. And each one of those nuclear membranes is enclosing a genetically identical set of sister chromatids. Now the other thing that happens is the chromosomes or chromatids begin to unwind and the DNA goes back to being that diffuse material we call chromatin. And finally, the last thing that happens is cytokinesis is happening concomitantly with telophase. That is, that one cell is now dividing into two cells uh, via these contractile proteins that are found in the outer cell membrane. So if you go back and take a look at the table of the cell's life cycle, you can see that a single revolution of that wheel, a single life cycle, can take as little as 24 hours to complete. That is, a cell can go from being a daughter cell to being a mother cell that produces its own daughters in less than 24 hours time. And this is really important in areas of the body that are under constant stress and need to be repaired very frequently. For example, the inside of the stomach lining is being replaced on average every five to seven days. And so we have to have a very fast rate of cell division. In other places in the body, for example, in the nervous system, we have virtually no cell division going on. And that's why damage of nervous tissue can often lead to permanent injury or paralysis. Now, most cells in the body do have an ability to divide, but they also have to be able to tell when not to divide. And so most cells in the body demonstrate a property called contact inhibition. That is, if I take some cells and put them in a nutrient auger uh, in a petri dish, we'll see that those cells will continue to reproduce and divide and divide and divide until they form a single layer across a petri dish. Once that happens and they contact the sides, they will effectively stop dividing. On the other hand, cancer cells are cells that have lost their property of contact inhibition. These cells will continue to grow and divide and divide and divide until not only do they reach the edges of the container, then they'll form multiple layers and finally overflow the container if there's enough nutrients around. Now, as you're probably aware, this type of cell division can lead to serious problems in the body. For example, it can obstruct blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, it can destroy nerves and other essential structures within the body. And of course, ultimately, it can lead to death. So one of your jobs as future veterinary assistants or technicians will be to conduct physical exams on your patients and also identify any lumps or bumps that may be cancerous and bring these to the attention of the veterinarian. So cancer cells can form something called a neoplasm. A neoplasm here essentially means new growth or a tumor. So a tumor is just an abnormal mass of cells caused by cellular overgrowth. Now that tumor may be benign, that is unlikely to spread throughout the body, or it may be malignant. Malignant here means cancerous and likely to spread to distant areas of the body. So why do cells sometimes become cancerous? Well, a lot of it happens to do with aging and also with the genetics of the person or the animal, but also exposure to mutagens can alter the DNA in such a way that those cells will go from being normal to cancerous. 
Okay, some common examples of mutagens that are found in the veterinary clinic include formaldehyde, which is a type of chemical used as a tissue preservative. Uh, other examples include, of course, x-ray radiation. Uh, we know that x-rays are useful for diagnosing patients with fractures of bones and so forth, but that we want to minimize our scatter radiation that we uh, incur by wearing our lead aprons and vests and so forth, because too much radiation can, of course, lead to mutation and cancer. And, of course, some viruses can act actually lead to cancers. For example, the feline leukemia virus, FLV, uh, can cause leukemia, which is a type of cancer of the bloodstream. And the last thing you may not know that is a potential mutagen are some certain types of vaccines. This is especially true for cats. Uh, we don't know why that sometimes when a cat is given a vaccination, uh, just the adjuvants or whatever that's in that vaccine can cause something called an injection site sarcoma, which is a localized uh, tumor in that one region. And for this reason, a lot of the vaccinations uh, are in cats may be done on the extremities so that if they do develop an injection site sarcoma, uh, the veterinarian might be able to just you know, lop that limb off and prevent that cancer from metastasizing. Okay, you've reached the end of the lecture on mitosis. Above is a link to a computer simulation of cell division mitosis. And also just remember there'll be a few practice questions following this slide so you can see how well you understand the material. Now, you're not going to be graded on these questions, but I do suggest if you get less than a 70% that you go back and review this lecture and take better notes before going on to take this week's Lalima quiz.